Nationwide multi-million dollar medical scam using your money. And tonight, whistleblowers speaking only to ABC Action News I-Team reporter Katie Legrone, exposing how the scam works and why your parents and grandparents are the primary targets. This is what I do most of my day. Look at Terry Coombs. If I walk, I lose my breath. It's no surprise. Can't do nearly nothing. 63, it feels like. 85, COPD, heart trouble, quadruple bypass, diabetes too. I forgot about that. I left that one out. <laughs> a few years ago, a medical supply company started calling. Two or three times a day. Trying to pitch him diabetes supplies he says he didn't want. I mean, they just wouldn't leave me alone. They just kept calling. Or need. I just started yelling at him. Harassing, harassing, harassing. Chantel Williams got the calls too. Why are you calling me? And I told the first person the same thing. I'm telling you, I don't want y'all supplies. It's happening around the country. Companies that call Medicare patients pitch unwanted medical supplies and send the government the bill. It was easy. Daniel Yarbrough. I knew what we were doing on a lot of levels that was wrong. And Cody Fletcher. We used to have a joke in the office calling people RoboCop because we sold them so many products. Know all about it. Diabetic supplies, stabilizers, ankle braces, knee braces, back support, wrist supports, walkers. Former managers for a medical supply company, they're now whistleblowers suing their former Florida-based employer in federal court, accusing AM Med Diabetic Supplies and its owners of knowingly defrauding the government by falsifying patient orders for unnecessary medical supplies and then billing the government millions of dollars for it. We would pay anywhere from $45 to $55 a back brace. Medicare, three reimbursements a grant. While an attorney for AMED says they don't discuss clients' ongoing litigation, in this motion to dismiss, they call out the whistleblowers for failing to show proof of even a single record or false claim submitted to the government. Eventually, the company shut down after the government stopped paying, but complaints span nationwide and beyond the grave. And how many people we called that were dead? You guys were sending products to people who weren't even alive? Yes. Yes. It was easy. And made easier since few doctors questioned orders before signing off on them. A must for Medicare to cover costs. Often doctors do what you call zombie signing. You've got a whole bunch of records. And you say, oh, well, what could the harm be? It's Dr. Joel Silverfield, who is not involved in the whistleblower case, says medical supply fraud is so rampant, he recently stopped signing order forms for supplies unless his patient is in the room with him. These companies are gaming the system because they know if they send out enough of these to doctors, many of them will come back signed. They ain't doing nothing for me. Terry eventually received pain cream and this back brace from AM Med. I says, I told you not to send it. Well, at least you got one in case you need one down the road. That in the long run, we all pay for. I'm I-Team investigator Katie Legrone taking action for you. And experts say the best way to protect yourself is never sign a blank form from your doctor or a medical supplier. Also, report anyone trying to offer you free equipment. You can report fraud to Medicare and the Attorney General's office. And we've got more tips on our website right now, abcactionnews.com. One of the fastest growing areas of health care, medical equipment like pacemakers, wheelchairs, and diabetic supplies, estimated to be a $70 billion industry in seven years. And tonight, I-Team reporter Katie Legrone uncovering how scammers are taking notice, trying to exploit patients and taxpayers, and why federal agents never saw it coming. Good afternoon, Andersons. Can I help you? In the world of healthcare scams, walkers and wheelchairs and hospital beds and scooters, durable medical equipment has long been considered a treasure for fraud. Things that are supposed to have a five year shelf life. While honest suppliers like this one are selling, scammers are cashing in. Since 2012, the feds have cracked down on more than $600 million in durable medical equipment fraud. Florida remains the epicenter for a scheme now evolving, leaving even the most seasoned investigators baffled. Why is Florida such a hotbed for this stuff? There seems to be a environment somehow in which fraud thrives, and I don't, I, I've never been able to quite figure that out. Ryan Lynch is the special agent in charge of Tampa's Medicare Fraud Strike Force team, one of 10 nationwide and set up to combat government health care fraud. When you say that Florida is ground zero for this kind of fraud, does that mean the patients are here, the providers are here, the doctors are here? Yes, yes, and yes. 
According to Lynch, scammers are now committing medical equipment fraud using telemedicine, a growing trend where doctors use phone or video to treat and prescribe. You have a whole group of doctors who are willing to write prescriptions for patients they don't have a relationship with, that they've never seen, and then you're cutting out the patient's real provider who knows better. Here's how it works. A medical supply company pitches Medicare patients medical equipment the patient doesn't need or want. The same company also hires doctors who have no relationship with the patient, but are willing to rubber stamp prescriptions for the device for the right price, up to 150 bucks per signature. Patient gets the goods, taxpayers foot the bill. I told him I didn't want it. Last month, this Medicare patient showed us the back brace he was sent after being harassed over the phone for over a year. <laughs> Go pick on somebody else. I'm tired of it. Fraud investigators say anyone can wind up a victim of medical equipment fraud and telemedicine created for patient convenience can make them more of a target to doctors out of state. And those patient names bought and sold on the black market. Tens of thousands of names on the list. They These whistleblowers work for a medical supply company out of this now vacant Delray Beach office, where they say thousands of Medicare patients got calls each week for supplies they didn't need, but made the company millions. The attitude was, you pay $55, $45 for a back brace, the reimbursement's a grant. That's money that you and I as taxpayers have to pay for. Dr. Jay Wolfson, a health policy professor at the University of South Florida, spent decades studying the impacts of Medicare fraud and abuse, now estimated to be a billion dollar problem. Most of it goes unnoticed and most of it goes unreported. All we're seeing is the tip of the iceberg. Patients have no idea. In just the past month, Tampa's strike force has opened a half dozen new medical device fraud cases, all rooted in telemedicine. I'm not sure anyone contemplated telemedicine being used as a mechanism to commit fraud. I would say it's a burgeoning problem. And one more reason to care about all of this, if you receive medical equipment like this back brace that you don't need, but you don't report it, when the day comes and you do need it, Medicare may not front the bill. So report everything you can about the company. Find out how by heading to our website. I'm my team investigator Katie Legrone taking action for you. First, a nationwide bust just hours after an I-Team investigation, all new at 6. Only ABC Action News takes you inside the federal raids on businesses that authorities say have been costing us all. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Wendy Ryan. And I'm Jamison Euler. This is exclusive video here showing federal agents raiding medical supply companies in Largo. I-Team investigator Kitty Legrone first exposed the problem just last year, and tonight she's live with the operation you'll only see right here on ABC. Katie? Wendy, about a half of about a half dozen rather medical supply companies operate out of this Largo office building this morning. Most of them became part of the investigation into a massive Medicare fraud scheme, one the feds call the largest in U.S. history. At this office building in Largo, it all went down just before 930 this morning. Agents from the FBI, police, and the Department of Health and Human Services arrived to execute federal search warrants inside about a handful of businesses here. Throughout the day, FBI agents have been going up and down, um, taking boxes and computers and various things from uh, offices located on the third and fifth floors that all seem to be related to the medical bracing industry. One of them we visited a few weeks ago as part of our ongoing investigation into unwanted medical supplies. The feds call today's bust Operation Brace Yourself, a nationwide crackdown on a complex telemedicine scam that put unwanted and unneeded orthopedic braces in the hands of hundreds of thousands of Medicare patients, costing taxpayers nearly $1 billion. The proceeds of the scheme were used to purchase exotic cars, yachts, and luxury real estate across the United States. According to the Justice Department, call centers in the Philippines and Latin America would find the patients, while U.S. medical supply companies would ship patients unwanted braces, giving kickbacks to the doctors who signed bogus prescriptions for them. It's almost $10,000. During our own investigation, we heard from Medicare recipients who were shipped braces they never wanted. I mean, they just wouldn't leave me alone. They just kept calling. I told the first person the same thing. I'm telling you, I don't want y'all supplies. Today's bus spanned seven states and resulted in criminal charges against two dozen people, including three doctors and four Florida men. 
while raids like this one in Largo aim to nab even more. And a total of 80 search warrants were carried out around the country today, and we are told that more arrests are likely. I'm Katie Legrone in Largo. Back to you. New at 11 millions in taxpayer dollars seized by the FBI in a conspiracy designed to exploit the elderly. I team investigator Katie Legrone uncovers a web of secrets surrounding dozens of Florida businesses set up by two people now under investigation by the feds. You're watching exclusive video as federal agents quietly raid this Florida office building. I look up and the entire lobby is filled with FBI agents. Part of a nationwide bust on Medicare fraud. It was a shock. <laughs> By early afternoon, the feds confiscated boxes of evidence and computers from nearly a dozen companies inside, according to the leasing manager here. I assumed it all to be on the up and up. The leasing manager says a man approached him about a year and a half ago looking for office space. We showed him a couple of spaces and he's like, you know what, I'll take them all. Companies moved in one by one, eventually taking up nine offices on two floors. What did he tell you about the business that he was in? The way I was understanding it is like this company would provide back braces, this company would provide knee braces, this company would provide hip braces, whatever, whatever kind of brace you need, like that's what they would provide. Now the feds are investigating. Documents reveal they've seized millions of dollars and froze assets tied to what they call a conspiracy to exploit the elderly and defraud taxpayers. He said he was making a lot of money and he needed to put it someplace. Weeks before the April raid, a viewer sent us a tip to check out one of the companies. With hidden cameras, we went in and found just one person answering phones. Boxes piled high with braces in this patient fitting area. Yet the sole worker told us patients never come here. Everything is handled over the phone. Wait till you see this. Diane Bertrand showed us inside a box. A knee brace, a wrist brace. Her mom recently received. Another wrist another brace. Another wrist brace. Another knee brace. All built to Medicare. And another one. Taxpayers. She didn't order this? No. She no. didn't want it? No. Does she need it? No. We tracked the box to this office tower in Holiday, Florida, where we found more than a dozen more medical supply companies that were also raided by the feds and started by the same players, according to the building's owner. They've always been very professional. State business records link Skylar Poppy and Kelly Wolf to at least 50 medical equipment companies on Florida's West Coast, including the ones here, 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 and this one that was just set up a stone's throw away from the county sheriff. To date, neither have been charged with any crimes. Property records show Wolf owns two waterfront homes in Clearwater, including this million dollar golf front townhouse she bought last year. Yeah, it's bad. Brian Albritton is a former U.S. attorney in Florida who used to prosecute Medicare fraud cases. If you don't really have patience, but yeah, it's made to appear as if patients in fact are coming. Uh, that itself would be a badge of fraud. And while charges have not been filed in this matter, he says so many linked to the same two people is suspicious. Just simply the sheer number of them kind of defies normal economic expectation. We found Wolf and Poppy back at this complex where state records show Wolf also runs a medical supply billing office. Neither wanted to talk. It seemed that their business model was to get the company started, get it up and running, sell it to another person. State records show some of these medical supply companies changed hands before the raids with new owners crossing both coasts of Florida and California while the majority shut down after a visit from the feds. I mean look at this. More medical yeah, suppliers yeah. are finding a home in the Sunshine State. If she put all this on she'd look like a robot. Profits and taxpayers and victims at the mercy of who's behind the box of goods. Somebody has to put a stop to it. It's just not fair. It really isn't. I'm I-Team Investigator Katie Legrone, taking action for you.